Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to smooth out audio and reduce harsh frequencies, whether you're working on a mix, something you've just recorded, or a sample you've downloaded. And the best thing is we're going to be using a free plugin to do so. So let's get right into it. There's quite a few premium plugins that you have to pay for that help you smooth and soothe your audio, and you may have seen me demonstrate a few of these on the channel. But there is a free way to achieve very similar results, and sometimes it gives you more control over the results. I want to get right into some audio examples, but I should show you where to get this plugin first. It's called Nova, and if you go to tokyodawn.net, I'll leave a link in the description, this is where you can download it. It is a completely free plugin, there's no mailing list, iLock, code to download. I've been using the TDR stuff for many years and it's always been incredibly stable and safe for me and it should work in just about any DAW. It's a dynamic EQ plugin so it's an EQ plugin with a sort of twist where you can use it as a compressor and that's going to come in very handy in just a moment. So if I jump back to the software like I said I'm using FL Studio but you could use any DAW, Logic, Ableton, Pro Tools this is all going to work the same and I've loaded up the plugin on my drum bus just as an effect here. If you're following along with me, just press this in button to enable the spectrum analyzer and let's take a listen and a look. So you can see the spectrum under here and initially if you start dragging these sort of band tokens around, it functions the same as a typical EQ. So we've got more treble and less so you don't hear the hi-hats and the snare so much. Same goes for the bass. So there's nothing unusual there besides the fact that as we've been EQing, the plugin automatically adjusts the gain to try and compensate for changes in loudness that might be making us think it's better or worse. But besides that, it's basically a standard EQ plugin. Where this becomes special is that you can select a band, let's say I choose band 3, and you can see you've got your typical EQ controls selecting a frequency, a cue, and then a boost or a cut. But if we press the threshold button, this band becomes dynamic and it, and it starts reacting to the frequency content. So this little EQ band here effectively becomes a compressor for that range of frequencies. So if I get some audio running, now you can see in this band of frequencies here, if I pull down the threshold, which is this blue line here, you can see that as the audio passes the threshold, this yellow line jumps down, which is our EQ curve. So every time that snare hits, we're taking a little bit of energy away from it. And just like any compressor, you can adjust the ratio here, the attack and release. So in this case, I probably want a very fast attack and again, quite a fast release. You can of course adjust the cue here to make it very wide or you can get really down into individual harmonics and just be reducing particular frequencies or resonances which annoy you. So that's the basic principle of it, is that instead of having a static EQ where you're constantly reducing the high end or the upper mids, instead what you can do is highlight where these harsh or annoying frequencies are, and then just set them up so that they are only reduced as and when they become too much. So when there's just too much energy there, you just cut them away. I do have a full tutorial on how to use dynamic EQ in lots of different situations, but I wanted to use this video as a chance to uh, show it to people that may not have even heard of it yet. So the same is true, of course, for any frequency band. Once we've set up the top end, we might want to do exactly the same for the low end. Turn the threshold on, lower it down, and let's get some audio playing. And now when the kick becomes a little too strong, we just reduce a little bit there. Hopefully you can see that this could be a great way to start controlling the dynamics in your track because you get to treat each frequency band in a different way. And you could say, well, isn't this just pretty much the same as a multiband compressor? And it is very similar, but the difference is you can choose very, very particular bells, curves, slopes, and apply them with a lot more precision than a standard multiband compressor. Let's move on to another quick example on guitar, but remember you can apply this to absolutely anything, and this video is really just to introduce the technique to you. So let's take a listen to this sample. And one of the problems I can identify is that some of the bass notes are too loud and some are too thin. And then also there's a lot of annoying squeaking and fizziness in the top end. So if I were to use an EQ and just reduce the low end, 
That would fix the notes that are too boomy, but the rest of the guitar would become very, very thin. And if I were to just set an EQ like this to deal with the squeaks, then all the lovely harmonics that are up there would be getting reduced all the time. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I've got this in button selected, and I'm going to solo this band so that I can try and find where those squeaks are centered on. Let's take a listen. It's a little bit lower than I thought it would be, but it's just over 3K here. So if I turn off this band solo, now that I've found the problem, I'm going to turn on the threshold, and I'm going to set this threshold until we get a little bit of reduction. I'm also going to increase the Q to make it a sort of narrower band here. And then I'm also going to adjust the attack and release. So I want the attack to be very fast. So I just click in this box and either drag to the left or drag down. And then I want the release to be quick as well, because that's a very short sound. I don't want it to take a long time to recover. I'm also going to turn off the EQ gain function because I just don't want it in this instance. So that's helping to smooth out the top end a little bit, but I can do the same thing with the low end. I can uh, set the threshold and just make sure that it's reducing just the loudest ones so that the more quiet bass notes can sound a little bit more full. And now altogether that sounds just a little bit more confident and a little bit more controlled. Doing it yourself, setting these frequency bands, soloing it in, finding the frequencies you want to fix or adjust, it really trains your ear. Whereas you can get other plugins, you can pay for them, um, and they'll do a lot of the work for you without you, you, know, you having to put in any effort. But I think it's really good to train your ears, identify where the problems are and how to fix them, which is exactly what you do with this plugin. But also, I find it quite fun, and it's also free, so you've got nothing to lose. But another reason I wanted to make this is just because often you can do a lot more with the stock and free plugins than you probably think you can. And you don't want to think that you have to buy a plugin in order to make your audio smooth or to reduce problem frequencies. It is really nice to treat yourself to, you know, a new plugin, a new instrument, a piece of hardware or software. It's really nice to treat yourself to that. But I find it's best when you really want that thing and, you know, you've saved up and you really treat yourself as opposed to, you know, marketing and adverts that maybe make you think that you really need a tool or you won't be able to, you know, achieve smooth and nice balanced sounding audio. So I hope you enjoyed this plugin. I've really enjoyed using it for many years. Please do check out my other videos and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.